had to grab some water. And it's surprising how dry your mouth gets when you're videotaping. Okay, so we're into the line 15C right now. There is a line 15A, B, and a B2. C, D, E, and F. Okay. Right now we're on line 15C. The title is going to be around. It's some of the titles do get changed when I blog them because uh, they don't fit. So most of the words are usually the same though. So it's Wow, Seti, Bosons, Wave Function, Atoms, Spin, Quantum, Mechanics, Newtons, Optics, Corpuscular. And this is all based on the Wow, Seti 1977 signal, line 15A. It's 31, 3, 1, 11, 11, and 1. This is going to be part 71. Sorry, I forgot to tell you the last one's part 70. Okay. Um... Okay, so what I've basically done is, that's my notes, and we'll go over to the data first, and hopefully we can fit them together. I've got the data on one page and all the notes on the other. I used to do them all together, but I was getting too confused, so this is just the way I've divided it up for you. Okay. 15C. Okay, we're going to talk about quantum mechanics. The spin statistics theorem relates the spin of a particle to the particle statistics it obeys. I brought that up in the last one, too. Just so you know. The spin of a particle is its intrascular angular momentum. That is the contribution to the total angular mo momentum, which is not due to the orbital motion of the particle. Our particles either have an integer spin or a half integer spin. In units of the reduced Planck constant, the theorem states that the wave function of a system of identical integer spin particles has the same value when the positions of any two partic particles, particles are swapped. Sorry, Particles with wave functions symmetric under exchange are called bosons. The wave function of a system of identical half integer spin particles changes sign when two particles are swapped, particles with wave functions anti-symmetric under, under exchange are called fermions. Now remember the two diagrams that had one with the bosons and ones with the fermions? Um, you can read more about this in Spin Statistics Theorem on Wiki. Um, okay, so it was first formulated by Marcus Fertz in 1939. And it was re-derived in a more systematic way by Wolfgang Pauli. Okay, now I get it. I, I bought up some web, websites about Wolfgang Pauli, and I didn't know who he was. I just thought it was a blogger, but I guess it's actually based on the guy's name. Interesting, isn't it? Okay, so it looks like 15B. Oh, that's why. 15C and 15B are kind of... Sorry. Okay, so relation to representation theory of the Lorentz group. We were talking about that in 15b, and of course, the, each of these videos are linked to each other. I'll bring up terms in one video and then decipher them in another. It's just the way my notes got all jumbled around when I push them around and resize them. Since the Lorentz group has no, no non-trivial unitary representation of finite dimension, it na naively seems that one cannot construct a state with finite, non-zero spin and positive. Lorentz invariant norm. For a state of integer spin, the negative norm states, known as unphysical polarization, are set to zero, which makes the gauge of gauge sym symmetry necessary. For a state of half integer spin, the argument can be circumvent by having fermionic statistics. That's completely Greek to me and probably to you too. But again, there's the message. Use the symbol for zero by the Maya. They said to use the symbol of zero where it says finite, non-zero, spin, and positive. Okay. So this is a little more about uh, wave functions. There's a general discussion about it on Wiki, but what I'm going to do is I've highlighted the areas that I think are important. The rest you'll have to read yourself on the website, the Wiki website. I'm only going to post a couple of quotes from it. A physical state is described by a wave function, or more generally, by a vector, which is also called a state. If interactions with other particles are ignored, then two different wave functions are physically equivalent if their absolute value is equal. So while the physical state does not change under the exchange of the particle's positions, the wave function may get a minus sign. So that's how you get a plus or minus sign. 
with your wave functions. Bosons are particles whose wave function is symmetric under such an exchange, so if we swap the particles, the wave function does not change. Fermions are particles whose wave function is antisymmetric, so under a swap, the wave function gets a minus sign, meaning that the amplitude for two identical fermions to occupy the same state must be zero. This is the Paul exclusion principle. Two identical fermions cannot occupy the same state. The rule does not hold for bosons. Bo bosons. So, so that's what the calculations look like. And then we'll show you a picture. These are what they're talking about for wave functions. You see these in graphs and um, radio signals. When you're looking at the radio telescope signals, when they're reading the signals for um, alien messages and stuff from SETI, they're looking for these type of variations in the wave. So some trajectories of a harmonic oscillator, a ball attached to a spring in classical mechanics A to B and quantum mechanics C to H. In quantum mechanics, C to H, the ball has a wave function. Okay, sorry, C to H. So this is C to H up here. C, D, E, F, G, H. Those four, those are the six we're talking about right now. So it says quantum mechanics, C to H. The ball has a wave function, which is shown with the real part in blue and the imaginary part in red. So your real part's in blue, your imaginary part's in red, okay? The trajectory C... C, D, E, F, but not G or H, are examples of standing waves. So these are called standing waves, or stationary states. Each standing wave frequency is proportional, proportional to, the, to a possible energy level of the oscillator. This energy quantization does not occur in classical physics where the oscillator can have any energy. Your guess is as good as mine what that means. <laughs> it's just there, okay? came up, so I put it up here. So quantum mechanics, also known as a quantum physics or quantum theory, is a branch of physics providing a mathematical description of much of the dual particle-like and wave-like behavior and interactions of energy and matter. So the name quantum mechanics, coined by Max Planck, which we saw in the last video, derives from the observation that some physical quantities can change only by discrete amounts or quanta. Again, you'll have to go to Wiki, Wiki if you want Wikipedia if you want to read the rest of it. So a mathematical function called the wave function provides information about the probability, amplitude of position, momentum, and other physical properties of a particle. Many of the results of quantum mechanics are not easily visualized in terms of classical mechanics. For instance, the ground state in the quantum mechanical model is a non-zero energy state that is in the lowest permitted energy state of a system. Rather than a more traditional system that is thought of as simply being at rest with zero kinetic energy. And then we got quantum mechanics has since branched out into almost every aspect of 20th century physics and other disciplines such as, so this is where you would find quantum mechanics. You're going to find it in quantum chemistry, quantum electronics, quantum optics, and quantum information science. Much 19th century physics have been, has been reevaluated as the classical limit of quantum mechanics, and it is more advanced developments in terms of quantum field theory, string theory, and speculative quantum gravity theories. And again, that's in Wiki under quantum mechanics, okay? Next video will be 15D where we'll be covering quantum gravity. So let's go up here a bit. We've got some more stuff. So there's our wave functions. And then I got a nice little picture here. And this is called probable probability densities corresponding to the wave functions of an electron in a hydrogen atom possessing definite energy levels increasing from the top of the image's bottom N1 two, this is number one, two, and then three, when it gets bigger. Angular momentum increasing across from left to right, SPD, okay. Brighter areas correspond to higher probability density in a position measurement. Wave functions like these are directly comparable to 
Cialdini's figures of acoustic models of vibration in classical physics and are indeed modes of oscillation as well. They possess a sharp energy and thus a keen frequency. The angular momentum and energy are quantized and only take on discrete values like those shown as in the case of four resonant frequencies in acoustics, quantum mechanics. This is a list of some of the major unsolved problems in physics. Now, I thought this was kind of cool because like, you know how aliens are known to have better technology than us, right? So I thought I'd take a look at some of these um, unsolved problems to see if I could find an answer to one of them or two of them, whatever, just for the fun of it. Okay, so some of these problems are theoretical, meaning the existing theories seem incapable of explaining a certain observed phenomena or experimental result. So, again, remember I said at the beginning um, of the WOW series, I said we had data coming up from the 17th century all the way up to 2011 where people um, either created an experiment, had a result that they can't understand, or they've actually invented something and it's called an unknown. Basically, they've invented something, they know what it can do, but they don't know what they can use it for. Okay, so these are the things that came up during this search, and we'll get into more of that as we go along. The others are experimental, meaning that there is a difficulty in creating an experiment to test a proposed theory or investigate a phenomena in greater detail. So basically, it's based on a theory. They haven't actually experimented, and they haven't had a chance to prove their theory. So we have theoretical problems, quantum gravity, cosmology, and general relativity. High energy physics, particle physics, excuse me, nuclear physics, other problems, empirical phenomena lacking clear scientific explanation, cosmology, high energy physics, particle physics, physics, astronomy and astrophysics, condensed matter physics, biological physics, problems solved in recent decades, references and external links. So this is probably a whole new video series. If I really wanted to go into it, it'd be kind of fun to see if I can find any data that would solve these problems. <laughs> you never know, right? <laughs> Unsolved problems in physics. It's just something fun. You can go through it too. So the next video is going to be 15D. And uh, what I'm going to do is, this is 15C, right? So go to my thoughts. This is how I get confused because I've got two separate sections now for it. Okay, so, um, January 16th, 2012, 2.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. What I do is, what I talk about in the C videos, the Boson's Wave Function, Electrons, Atoms, the Quantum Mechanics, and Spin Statistics Theorem. So I did that for myself, and I also did a little graph here of all the things that we talk about in all the videos, just so I know what topics are covered this time. I'm getting more organized as I go along. I was laughing because yesterday I, I made an index of all these videos and I actually started with just 15 videos believe it or not and we're up to uh, number 71 so yeah cute right okay so my thoughts I'm still trying to figure out the bosons in relation to a wave function and electron atoms I'm stumped so far and hoping that as we dig deeper the answers will be given for the record, all things not understood have come up in a line or two afterwards where more details are given about a certain fact. That's what I found doing these videos, no word of a lie. We'll come up with uh, something in line 8 or line 6 and then line 8 will explain it. And it's really weird, but that's how it goes. When I started this, I was originally just going to present the data that is found by doing a Google search on the answers to the math equations found in the WOW study radio signal from 1977. This one's not a math equation. It's the placement of numbers, 31, 3, 111, and 11 and 1. Basic numbers and spacing is all that is used, and the data you now see is all in relation to this number. Any function or mathematical equation theories or findings are then further investigated to see what they are linked to. Many times I'll get information about a planet, satellite, a star, or word that means something either about aliens, Maya, DNA, proteins, or components used for building a faster rocket jet propulsion engine, or spaceship travel. 
velocity functions and equations that we use to measure things in outer space. As I'm going over all these notes in line 50, I'm feeling quite overwhelmed with this section. It's taken me weeks to do the research. In this actual particular section, 15b, it took me three weeks to try to figure this stuff out. Um, I still don't know what it all means, but I tried to organize it better just so that you guys wouldn't be so lost with it. It's taken me weeks to do the research and many days to decipher what it is and link it together for you to search and help with these puzzle pieces. I cannot do this alone. I need help from people that are familiar with this type of technology and data in hopes that it can be used for future inventions here on Earth. Each time I read, I cannot understand any of it in line 15. Seriously, I didn't understand nothing. This one's another challenge for me to decipher because I'm having difficulty comprehending what these words mean or their meanings found in Wiki. When I find a diagram about it, that seems to bring it to light for me. Every time I find something new, I'll look up another one of the words in its description. See, so that's how it linked to the well steady signal in some cases. True, I've gone off on a tangent and found stuff that's about outer space, alien DNA, UFO sightings along the way. Yeah, I did, didn't track that, sorry. <laughs> and I cannot resist but to put them in with the data. They came up together, so it must mean something, right? Well, looking at this particular data for line 15C and reading about the quantum mechanics, I came across something that's called Newton's corpuscular theory of light. I had to know what it was so I googled it and I've posted that information in this section. Now I think that Newton's talking about some little particles found in our universe. In 2012 we have found the tiniest of all particles in the universe. It's called a neutrino. It's the smallest particle defined so far in the universe. They are currently testing it in January 2012. It travels faster than the speed of light, which of course blew everyone's mind and they ordered more tests to prove that fact because it went against everything they have been taught and believed since the 17th century. Don't you just love the universe? It's so much fun. For those of you currently studying this partic particular phenomena, maybe we can find the answers to your questions back in the 17th century since that's where we seem to be finding most of our data in relation to new discoveries in 2011, 2012, or earlier years. For more about neutrinos and how Maya and alien technology can help you find answers to your many questions, see these videos. Um, Go to the Light is a future video. It's, there's, it's not filmed yet, but I'll let you know when it's ready. The James Webb Telescope, parts number 35, 36, 37 in the video series. In the WOW study videos, you want to go to line 15b, 15c, 16, 19, 22, 24. Also mention neutrinos in the research data, and it does come up with some really interesting um, inventions and tests and things that have been done with it from people from all over the world. You are currently at line 15c, part 70 out of 100 videos, the idea girl. Okay? So we'll go over here, and I've goofed up here, I put 71, it's supposed to be 70. I better double check that. My numbers on my videos are coinciding. Okay, so we're going to go over here. Um, the thing about Newton's, Newton's theory, I didn't know what it meant, so I googled it. Okay, so this is what came up here. We have, in optics, corpuscular theory of light, set forward by Sir Isaac Newton, states that light is made up of small, discrete particles called corpuscles, little particles, which travel in a straight line with a finite velocity and possess kinetic energy. So he thinks light is created by these little particles. Wouldn't it be cool if neutrinos are those particles that create light? <laughs> Who knows, eh? <laughs> That'd be wild, eh? Newton's theory remained in force for more than 100 years and took precedence over Huygens? wave front theory. Because, partly because of Newton's great prestige. However, when the corpuscular theory failed to adequately explain the diffraction, interference, and polarization of light, it was abandoned in favor of Huygens' wave theory. Newton's corpuscular theory was an elaboration of his view of reality as interactions of material points through forces. 
Note, Albert Einstein's description of Newton's concept of physical reality. So that was about what uh, Isaac Newton says, and this is what Albert Einstein thinks of his theory. Newton's physical reality is characterized by concepts of space, time, the material point, and force. Interaction between material points, physical events are to be thought of as movements according to the law of material points in space. The material point is the only representative of reality in so far as it is subject to change. The concept of the material point is obviously due to observable bodies. One conceived of this material point on the analogy of movable bodies by omitting characteristics of extension, form, spatial locality, and all their inner qualities, retaining only inertia, translation, and the additional concept of force. So that's the corpuscular theory of light. Okay, so it's about the theory of light and what creates it. I guess that's what that means. Okay, so our next video is going to be 15D and then E and F. Okay, sorry, this one went a little longer.